Okay, let's uh, talk about macros and processing and trying to deal with this unstructured data. What we've uh, got here is a sample of the data that I gave you uh, for your homework assignment. And we can see that we've got all these records in here and our boss supposedly wants us to figure out a way to take this unstructured data and get it into our uh, access database. The problem, of course, is that the data is not in a form that we can import, uh, for those of you who have already tried. But if we look, take a quick look at the data, we can clearly see that this repeats itself, these characters here. And if we kind of open this up a little bit, we can see that uh, because of the repetition, the, we can probably assume these are field names and these are the actual values for the database. So to kind of get started, why don't we just copy these, okay, copy them. We'll go over to the second sheet and we'll do something called a transpose, okay, in which we'll merely convert the rows into columns or columns into rows, depending. So now we've got our column headers over here. So we might go back to the sheet now and say, well, okay, we're in good shape. Let's, we can go over here to the where the data is located in, in column B and select it, copy it, and then we can just do a quick transpose and hey, we're on our way. So we might think, well, that's pretty good, but if we go back and think about this, we've got probably another uh, 500 to 600,000 additional copy and paste to do, and the boss has only given us an hour to process all this data, so that's not going to work because we still need to allow some time for uh, doing our database work because we have a bunch of questions we have to answer. So how are we going to get this over there? How are we going to automate this? Well, one of the things that we can do is use something called a macro. And a lot of programs have these, but a macro is a way of recording a, s a series of steps or mouse clicks and then allow you to automate that function. So in this particular case, um, I can go to my developer tab up here on the ribbon and I can say uh, record a macro. Okay, and we'll give it a name. Let's call it macro1. All right. So yes, we'll replace that. And we'll go over, we'll position ourselves in B9. We'll move down just one, uh, one row. We'll select that information. We'll copy it. We'll go over to our sheet. We'll paste. Oh, we got to paste transpose, right? Then we'll just move the cursor down. And then we'll go back to sheet one. Position our cursor at the next column down. And stop recording. Okay? So we'll see uh, who did this. This reviewer profile name was DLLPA. So we go over here and we say, yep. We got them. Okay, so let's go back to our sheet. So since we're in the right position, if we run our macro, it should work, right? So let's go over here. Here's macro one. Uh, so let's run that. Let's see what happened. Well, looks like what happened is it just copied the same data again. Um, so that's not right. What, what do we think happened? Okay. Well, in case you're wondering, um, when I recorded the macro, uh, Excel recorded the absolute cell location. So every time I run macro one now, it's going to go to uh, this specific cell, copy it, and paste it again. So we don't really want it to do that, right? I mean, that's, that's not very help helpful. So what we do is we can use something called relative references in which we just record the last reference, so all the keystrokes are relative to the last action. So since we've already got this one in there, this is uh, the one that starts on uh, row 10, let's do the same thing, but let's enable relative references. Okay, let's record our macro, we'll call it macro 2. And yes, we're going to replace it. So what we'll do is then now we're going to go down one cell. We're going to select everything. We're going to copy it. 
we're going to go over to sheet 2, we're going to go down 1, and then we're going to do our fancy transpose paste. Then we're going to come back to sheet 1, position our cursor, and stop the recording. All right, so now the last one we have in there is Natalie Chorus. <clears throat> That's this person. So let's run macro 2 and let's see what happens. Okay. All right. Well, it looks like we moved down a little bit. Okay, so it looks like uh, Carl should be the last reviewer in our beta. And sure enough, there it is. So if we go back to sheet 1, um, and we keep running this macro, macro number two, we can see that we can keep adding in uh, these additional records. So we've automated all those keystrokes into a single macro.